I'll get back to you later. Uh, okay. Greetings. I am Lakesh. Hey, Lakesh. Thank you for coming. You are very welcome. Now, there is parts of these stories that I know best. There's parts of them that other people know better than I do. Uh -huh. About Lucifer, Gahil would know better than I. Right. But as far as the uh, wars and things of that nature that happened on your planet, we were very much aware of them at the time. So... Uh, and angels might not be so uh, much wanting to be involved in those kinds of things. Right. So uh, that is why I came to tell you about the more, the, the earthly things. Thank you. Whereas he will probably chime in later about the, the angelic things because Lucifer was an angel. Right. So he will like tell you that story later. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you a few things. The, the his history at that time is rather spotty. Mm -hmm. They don't write things down that well and they don't record things as well as they do now. But even in your European war history and Russian war history, there are still spaces and spottiness even up through the 20th century. So places where people are not sure of the true history or nature of what happened in certain situations. Mm -hmm. So we'll do our best to bring as much light on this subject as possible. So we see that at that period of time, there was a war. The Orions were at war with a couple of species. The, the Orions were very warlike and very uh, much uh, wanting to possess things and take things for their own. But they were not really interested in Earth. They were more interested in other places, but they happened to uh, move to Earth to do battle because they did not care about Earth that much, and that was a perfect place them to do battle is on a place where they did not care about. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that they were fighting for Earth or any of its products. They were really fighting for another planet in the solar system, which, I, it, which we're not sure which one. It was either Jupiter or Saturn. We're not sure. They wanted one of the really big ones for a purpose that... Um, that was unbeknownst to us. But the battles that happened on your planet are actually documented, at least some of them. So therefore, and also the Martians were um, feeling that they were being encroached upon by the Orions as well, because if they were to take, uh, supposedly, if they were going to take the, the planet that they wanted, this would be encroaching on the Martian territories mm -hmm. because the Martians had stretched out and had uh, visited Jupiter and Saturn 
Earth and Mercury and Venus and all, all the planets in the area and most of the moons. And so they were actually fairly advanced. And they, this Orion involvement was not something that they found uh, positive. So yes, they were fighting uh, against the Orions as well. But the Orions were actually fighting against another Orion group. It was a, a double Orion interaction. Now, they were nomadic. They were part of the same uh, species in many ways. They, were, they had divided because they had different ideas of how to use the planets and the materials found during their space conquests. And so after a while, a divide in their species became very obvious because some wanted to um, take the planets over and use them for slave trade with uh, any, any kind of beings that were there. The others were just interested in the uh, radioactive materials and some of the uh, materials that were there. And they were actually very much interested in not having a trade slave, a slave trade, because it would uh, be too much of a bother. So they divided and they were fighting against one another and that became part of the battle. But when the Martians became uh, involved in it, it also became more of a, a firefight because they were protecting their own planet and the things that they claimed in the solar system to be their own, which we are not sure exactly what they claimed, but we know that they were very much uh, involved with Jupiter, Saturn, and uh, at least Venus. Now, Venus had its own population. So Venus is one, they were friendly toward Venus, and the Venusians were actually friendly with the Martians. So their, their um, unity was secure. So they were protecting Venus because Venus is actually less advanced than Mars at that point. But mm -hmm. still, Venus more advanced than Earth because we're in our, you know, in your primal states, in our opinion. So mm -hmm. it would be that, mm -hmm. in our opinion, mm -hmm. uh, the life on those three planets, yours was the farthest behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so therefore, Mars had struck uh, some deals with uh, Venus to protect them. Mm -hmm. So the wars that were, the, uh, the battles that happened on your planet were uh, between the Orions and the Martians, but more between the Orions than, the, the Martians really did not fight too much on this, on your planet. And the reason is they saw that there was people there and they did not want to really interact unless they absolutely had to with the Orions on your planet. But the only reason why they would interact with the Orions on your planet is if they were going to be battling in areas where there was a, a lot of humans and there could be a lot of life loss. So they would try to push them away from the population because mm -hmm. that is something that they did not want. They did not want the humans to be destroyed. They, they were actually quite humanitarian uh, about the life in the solar system. You, you understand, correct? Okay. So therefore, the Martians only would battle against the Orions on Earth to push them away from the populace. Now, the reason that Orions were on the Earth is because it was a good battleground, and they don't, didn't really care. They didn't know that, or didn't feel that there was that much uh, uh, uranium or uh, 
plutonium and things of that nature on the planet to get excited about. So it, it's a good place to do battle. Because they didn't really care about the planet and its mineral content at the time. So, but the one faction did care about the slaves. They would love to have uh, taken humanity as slaves. But, of course, they were battling against the ones that wanted minerals. And, and they didn't even care about the earth as much. But they did care that uh, their their other faction was wanting to enslave the people. And so they did come to battle against them so they could not enslave humanity. Are you following me so yes, far? Yes, yes, absolutely. Very good. And so this is where you have Zeus and Mars and Venus and all these different names that came out, Neptune, uh, because they they claimed that they they could take on uh, different personas as far as uh, dealing and inter interacting with your people. And this was the ones that wanted the slave trade. They wanted to beguile the human race and make them believe that they were gods so that they would follow them willingly into a service. So these were the ones that were actually the ones that uh, wanted slave trade. And they actually did have many humans that followed them around and did their bidding for them. And they did command and order them to do things and they would follow. You remember that, that part of the scenario. Okay. So Zeus was the one that was the the most powerful of them was the commander of, of many of the ships. And he could, he was able to shoot lightning from, he had technology on his wrists that was able to shoot, um, a, it, it looked like lightning bolts, but it was actually lasers. They didn't know how to, to describe it properly, so they called it lightning. But it was lasers and uh, dangerous weaponry. Mm -hmm. Now, the others decided that they would let Zeus be the one that, that showed all the power. And they would not because that would be their way of beguiling humans to follow them. They would not have the weapons. They were friendly. They were nice. But it was all a trick, of course. Mm -hmm. But the the um, but they let Zeus be in control, of course. So he, he also uh, was a commanding humans, but in a much different way. So they they heralded them as gods, and they were all through the Greek, uh, Europe, European and Italian areas. And there's many rumors of all the things that they've done, or they did, and how they caused many different uh, people to be slaves, and how they were, um, how they commanded and were worshipped by the people. A lot of that information was destroyed by the other uh, Orion faction because they did not want humans to. Uh, see Orions that way as slave keepers and, and of tricksters. They, so they did as much damage to the history of uh, the Greek and uh, Roman mythology as they could. But some of it did last. Uh, they destroyed a lot of it that was left over in the European realms. But they did, and they did destroy that which was in the Asian areas. But the battles took place in Siberia and in Russia, all through Europe. Um, but this was early in your history, before the, before the birth of Christ, about a thousand years, maybe more, probably 1,200 years before Christ. Mm-hmm or Jesus. 
And so it was not reported well. It was not recorded well. But you will be able to find uh, remnants of the battle still in some of those areas in the north where uh, there was not many people because mm -hmm. it, it uh, burned the ground. It, uh, they left particles of their technology there. They had many battles in those areas because the Martians pushed them toward less populated areas. And um, any time they would start a battle, uh, there was a battle started in Germany area, the German area, and the Martians pushed them uh, well north and to the east so that they could uh, be in Tundra area so that it would not be, there would not be any harm to humans. How did so, Martians look at that time? What? How did Martians look? Uh, they're similar to the way they look now. They're shorter. They're shorter people. They are not green. Um, they are of a, a, a reddish tint in the sense they they're not pinkish like humans or peach colored, but they're more reddish in skin color. But and so when they have, uh, were on earth they th they were looked at as demons mm -hmm. if they were to appear on earth people thought they were demons because they were red reddish mm -hmm. and they did have um they're not real beautiful so it was easy for that people to call them demons but although they were protecting humans more than uh, more than anything they were not trying to harm humans at all. And they were short. They were rather, their faces had rather uh, sharp dimensions to them. Their, their cheeks were rather sharp and pointy and their uh, heads were a, a little larger than what it looked like their bodies mm -hmm. could hold, but they had large brains. So, but their heads were very light because the brain uh, was uh, made of matter that was lighter than your human brain. And they, wow. their bone structures were much lighter. So it was that they could have a larger head and it could be easily balanced with the body. I got it. Thanks. Um, what about the grace? What are grace? There were greys. What do you want to know about them? Uh, on which side were they? They were on the, uh, actually, they were for themselves. They weren't on either of those sides. Mm -hmm. Greys now, seeing that there was a battle raging between the Orions, did have an interest on Earth. And since most of the fighting was on the European side, there was fighting in the Canadian areas as well the northern part of Canada and things. but So they took advantage of trying to find some of the materials. Wherever they were battling, they were on the opposite side of the planet. So if, if, the, if the Orions were battling on the Siberian soil, they would be in, in the Canadian and American soil, or even sometimes South American areas or African areas looking for different things. They were, uh, they do, did take quite a bit of the diamonds from the, uh, from the diamond mines in Africa. That we do know. They did get some uranium, plutonium, and some other radioactive, radioactive materials also. But other than that, their, um, their conquest was meager compared to other planets that they went to. They, re they did find uh, humanity interesting, and they did find the materials interesting, but there were other planets that were richer in what they really wanted. So they didn't really spend a lot of time on the Earth at that point. 
but they were not allies with anyone. I see. Um, I don't know if, uh, so I'm trying to connect the, the other stories to that story. And the other stories also include uh, semi-gods and um, uh, creation of the human race. Is it the time when Orions were creating the human race or is it before? No. The human race was well in existence before these wars. Um, I do not know why every story has, it, it seems to me, uh, dear Max, that a lot of these stories, uh, if something, if another species comes to the planet, they're creating the re human race. Now, everybody wants to take uh, credit for that because it's an amazing accomplishment. But the truth is they all had a hand in it in one way or another, but no one actually created the human race. It, there was uh, beings here that were uh, transformed into the human race, if you will. The Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal and all those different uh, early species, they did some work with them. They, they did some uh, hybridization with them. They did all kinds of things with them. These, these early man creatures, you will see evolved way faster than they should have. It's, and there is missing links in the, in the middle of there. There are a couple missing links. And the reason for that is, is they sped up the evolution periods and created another species out of what was there. And there will be no finding the missing link because there is not. Right. And, and so as different species were looking at these, they, they realized that the news had gotten out that this planet was more of a, a, an early scientific project, if you will, and mm -hmm. many different species went there to do what they would do, and eventually they were kicked out by a, a greater force. The Blue Avians, when they came into existence in the Egyptian culture, and when Atlantis was available also, back many, many, many millennia, uh, they started to get rid of those factions that were coming in and trying to see the planet in a very unhealthy way. So they got rid of them. Um, all right. So I guess uh, my, uh, the story I'm trying to, uh, to fit here is, uh, is at that time, um, I guess Atl Atlantis would like, what is the involvement of their Orions in Atlantis? I guess the Orions in Atlantis? Yeah. Well, the, the Atlanteans did not, would not tolerate any battles over their areas. And eventually they grew tired of the Orions battling. And actually, Wait, wait a minute. I'm, I'm mixing up a couple stories here. The, the Atlanteans came far before the, the Orions battled. And they, are, they were there well before Orion. And they left before the Orions had their battle. So the Atlanteans had nothing to do with the Orions whatsoever. Not on Earth. The Atlanteans do have something to do with the Orions in other parts of space, but not on the Earth. I see. Um, so they were there far before the Orions came to battle. Okay. So I guess maybe the, in this story, the names weren't tried. But basically the story went that uh, Orions came here and... Uh, did a lot of genetic engineering, which to me reminded the Atlantean genetic engineering. So maybe it was a different race which did that. Well, Orions, the, the Orions did have factions of their population 
that did do some genetic work on the planet once they saw, but that was far earlier than the battles that you that you're right. talking about. Right. So yeah, I'm talking about this earlier time. Yes, Orion's were here earlier than the battle times by several thousand years, and they just were interested in the human population and the scientific. You see, Earth was noted as a scientific uh, area that you could work with the primitive species and work with different kinds of hybridizations and things of that way, nature. Uh, there are rumors that that is where the ape and the gorilla had come from. They hybrid, they uh, did hybrid experiments and separated that species from them um, permanently in many ways. So interestingly enough, we're not even sure if that's true. Mm -hmm. But there are many different rumors about how many different species has come to the planet, how they seeded it. There's many, many stories which one is true by fact or by the the mere study of the planet it would appear that uh earth being a scientific project many many thousands and thousands of years ago seems to be accurate because there is so many different uh kinds of alien dna within the human a, a being. There's not just Pleiadian or Orion or whatever. There are many, there's reptilian and insectoid and all these, uh, Lyran and, and even um, some in a touch of insectoid. How that got in there had to be by hybridization. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, or it can be natural. You know, if insect insects bite us all the time. So we are you know, we exchange our blood with them all the time. So, and course, we, we eat yeah. insects too. So we can exchange some DNA with insectoids naturally as well. Of course. <laughs> with insects, with primitive insects, I would but, say. But we're trying to figure out why it would show up in the DNA in some people as strongly as it does. Right. But so it just is that it's a question. It is a bit of an enigma and it cannot be ruled out that insectoids may have done hybridization work with humans as well. It is noted that there is a, a gray insectoid species that is a hybrid species that is now have uh, that is now becoming um, aware in your galaxy, but they are not from your galaxy. But there is a gray insectoid hybrid species that it has now been known to give a couple of, um, what are they called, implants to certain people, and we are not sure why they are doing this. But that is a purely hybrid species. Greys and insectoids, as far as we know, could not possibly naturally mate. I see. So coming back to the story, um, so the story went that there were uh, uh, godlike humans before the Atlantis, and um, I don't know the name of, of those. It could be Lemurians, but could be others. And then the Orions came, and they were excited about their um, emotional they, emotional yeah. uh, life and capacity, magical capacity because of their emotional life. And they started mating, uh, hybridizing with them or mating with them and created the Atlanteans. And then, so it could be not Orions, it could be some other race, but it was presented as Orions. Okay, well, all right, go ahead. Um, let me tell you this, the Orions, no, the Atlanteans and the Lemurians cohabitated in Atlantis for a long time. Uh, the Atlanteans were there first, of course, but the Lemurians came shortly after and were very welcome there. And so the, the Lemurians were not the same as the Atlanteans. 
they had many similarities and could live peacefully uh, together, but they were not the same species. Now the Orions came be at the same time as Atlantis, but not the battling ones. They were the ones that wanted to do hybridization work on the primitive beings that were there in some other parts of the world. Whereas, and then the, the development of the Egyptian culture mm -hmm. back then also from, as you see, the Egyptian culture was part of the hybridization program. Look at all the different species that yes. were there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the Egyptian culture. And you will see that humans, they had found a, um, a species, an, uh, they had created a species earlier that they, they could use as a, um, that were intelligent, but they could also use as a slave race, and they could also use for many different things. Uh -huh. And so the human, human culture was basically perfected by the Egyptian culture uh -huh. in the early, early creations. Yes, uh -huh. that matches the story, yes, nice. So the key point of that story was that there was a fight between people who were named uh, Orions at this story, but basically it would be, I guess, a, a mental type, non-spiritual, how do you call them? Non-spiritual people. It could be either Orions or bad uh, Atlanteans or some other. And well, usually, yes, the Orions were not very spiritual. That is true. They had flushed their systems of emotion. And so without emotion, spirituality becomes very dry. And so many of them had released it as even a thought process. They did not believe that, it, uh, that any spiritual elements existed in the universe because once you, once you uh, remove yourself from the emotion of the energies that, that create uh, personalities in many ways, you, you have uh, gotten rid of your diversities in many ways as, all, as well. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Nice. So, so these uh, non-emotional, non-spiritual people uh, created some uh, some human uh, human uh, some uh, humans, and then uh, messed up with the human genetics and messed up with everything. And then at some point, there was a fight between the spiritual people and non-spiritual people. And um, at that time, it was said that the Earth went into uh, a time loop and the spiritual people people went inside the earth and um, and the earth became isolated from the galaxy in the time loop and they, we will come out of this time loop when um, the the souls which did the destruction would uh, uh, learn the spirituality and learn how to live with emotions so that was the the uh, main uh, well, of the story so I'm trying to to match it with the history. Well, the thing is, that's, that sort of story is kind of like a fairy tale in the sense that, oh, yes, time loops do exist, but your planet is not in the midst of a time loop at this time, or never was. But they put it, it put that slant on it to, to make it, uh, to, match the prophecies of the human universe so that it would have some mystical value. And it's really not mystical that there is a time coming when, yes, these factions will reunite and things will straighten out. But it is not necessarily a time loop. It is that it is a time separation. It's a separation from the time uh, from the, it's a separation from different kinds of cultures. Look at all the different cultures that exist on your planet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And some of them are very spiritual, 
but they are not unified. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the unification of religion is coming to your planet mm -hmm. in the sense that they will, they will all believe very similar thi things at some time in the future <laughs> because it is the way God wants it to be. He is uh, very much wanting to see everyone believe the same way and follow him in a very particular way. So this is your time loop. Uh, they call it a time loop because it's, it is bringing all these different religions and emotions and spirits, in spiritualities, into one thought process. And that is sort of a time loop, if you understand it to be so. But the non, the darkness that is found also among your people, and the darkness that is those that are not religious or believe in no spirituality are going to put up a great fight about the, the unification of religion and the unification of thought processes with mankind. So there is where your battle will lie. Okay. So now, it does match your story in the way that reality would match your story. But you see, they threw in this sort of fantasy of a time loop which does not really exist. How about um, people which went into the earth, like wrapped it around and created something uh, inside the earth? There, is, there are many people inside your planet. There are many civilizations inside your planet. Mostly Draconian, Agarthan, the golden people under the Himalayas. There are many different species there. And they do have um, a great deal of influence on the spirituality of the planet. The Draconians in the Chinese and Japanese area and Korean areas are very negative and, and hold a very negative uh, thought process for the planet. But there are others such as the white Draconians in, the, in Scandinavia and the, the neutral Draconians in the English and French areas under the ground that are different, so they do not hold negativity for the planet. Then there are the Agarthans, then there are the, the golden people of the Himalayas. Underneath the planet, there are many different species that are actually holding positive thoughts for the planet. And, uh, and did that answer your question, or is there some other Yeah. Question? Um What about the Russia, which, which, which uh, kind of, is it Draconians governing the Russian? They, the well, you see, in China and Japan, it is draconians, and in this, and in uh, the European and uh, Finland and Sweden and that area, it's also draconians. In the Russian area, under the ground, it's not so much draconians but reptilians. Oh, I see. There is some reptilians. Also, you have the clairs that are at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. And then you have another species of ancient reptilians that are in under the um, Ukraine area. Oh, right. And um, which of the species uh, went, I guess it is after Egyptian time. So some sometime, I guess, in the, maybe it was the first crisis, maybe, crisis of the first Egyptian dynasty when the spiritual people went into the earth. Which, which of the people would be that? The spiritual people that went into the earth were the Agarthans. I, I recently speak to some Agarthans and they, they said they came to the planet very recently, like a thousand years ago. So They were there back then and then they returned, yes. Ah. You see, they did not stay, but they had to return because of the, the promise they made to the earth in the distant past. 
They were there for a, a couple thousand years. Then they left, and now they have been back for, I'm not sure how long they've been back, for a few hundred years or a thousand years. Oh, wow. So it's the same Agarthans. Wow. Yes. Okay. Uh, I invite them some other time to speak more about the ancient history. That would be. They have a very interesting history. Uh, they are under Mount Shasta. Oh wow! Really? That is where the Agarthan headquarters is. Oh wow! They have a couple other places under the earth that they do also exist in large communities. However, Mount Shasta is where their ritualistic. Uh, life is and where there uh, there there's a lot of activity there with uh, Agarthan. Excellent. Um, I, I ran out of time for this part of the inquiry. Uh, thank you very much. Unless Your you have something to me, uh, I would like to invite Yogananda for Yoga personal session. One moment, please. Thank you. Thank you for your help. It was wonderful to talk to you, Max. Nice to talk to you, thank you. But I had to take on a rather serious tone today, so for, please forgive that for- You did good, thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too.